Eastern head coach, Bill Cohen, coach and opening statement. I think uh, this evening's game um, really, uh, I thought Vermont dictated tempo and, and uh, dictated the play in the paint um, pretty much the whole uh, basketball game. Uh, we had our chances, and I thought we came out of the locker in the second half and had a little bit more energy and focus, um, and we were able to make a mini run at them, and I thought we were going to creep back into the game, and we had some uh, left some points on the free throw line and had some uh, critical turnovers at, at inopportune moments um, that kind of quieted our run. Um, and, I, and I thought, you know, we just didn't have enough left in the tank to make that, that second run that late in the game. Uh, I thought if we could get get the game tied up um, at some point during that run, we, we'd have a great chance of winning the basketball game. Uh, but this team has played really, really well up until this point. Um, I just thought we had a couple moments where we didn't execute our game plan when it was on out of bounds plays. We that's uncharacteristic of us. We kind of misplayed a few out out of bounds underneath and gave up some easy baskets. Um, and I thought Vermont was. So, uh, did a great job of taking charges tonight and stepping in. When I thought we had momentum, they stepped in and, and kind of quieted our run. Um, but uh, you got to tip your hat. They played a very good basketball game. Uh, we, we, we fought in the second half, but came up a little short. Coach, yeah, dramatics of the first two games of the season, going to the party and thought maybe you'd do it again. Yeah, you, you know, this team, uh, I think, is going to surprise a lot of people. They, they believe in themselves. They, they got a lot of confidence and, uh, you know, the way we were playing that comeback uh, it, towards the middle of the second half, I thought I thought we were going to do it. Um, but you know, they, they, they're certainly they're a young group, they're a resilient group, and they'll learn from this. Coach, just talk about that comeback a little bit more. Cutting the, uh, the lead to five. What were some of the keys for that? Well, just you know, I thought we we got more aggressive. Uh, you know, I thought the first half their ball pressure uh, forced us to go a little quicker than we wanted to go, and we settled for jump shots. We didn't get the ball around the rim. We didn't drive the ball. Um, things that we had done so so well um, in the first two games, we, we just kind of settled for contested jump shots, um, and then we started to get the ball into Reggie a little bit and, and uh, drive the ball to the basket and try to draw contact the ball. And I think we're a much better basketball team when we get to the foul line. Um, but I thought we we left points on the foul line too, so those things all make it difficult to come back. But uh, we put ourselves in position, but we didn't capitalize on our opportunities. Coach, what's it going to take to get a double-digit lead in one of these games for that? Uh, you, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't know. We'll see how uh, Alaska plays out, but you know, I don't think we're going to overpower anybody offensively. Um, it's going to take a tremendous defensive effort. Uh, that was the other disappointing thing. I thought they came out and they shot the ball really well. They shot 50, close to 53 percent in the first half, and. Uh, you, you know, when, when, when you're doing that, means one thing, you're giving up a lot of layups uh, around the rim, and two, uh, you, you, you're just not being physical enough. Uh, second half, we did a much, much better job, um, but I thought we gave them a cushion that we, we couldn't make any more mistakes in that second half. Unfortunately, the turnovers and missed free throws left us a little short. Coach, with Leo for the time being, you know, how, how important is Joel Smith right now? Yeah, I, th I think all our guys are important. Reggie's had a, a, a tremendous first couple of games here for us. Uh, Quincy played, uh, you know, off the charts down down in New Jersey. Joel had a good game today, but we also need, um, you, you know, a, a surprise guy almost each and every night where they're going to play um, at a very high level uh, in, for, in order for us to win. And that guy may come off the bench. He may be in a starting lineup, um, but we got to keep uh, developing our depth as we go along. Um, because those, those are the guys that are going to be the difference makers. I, I almost, uh, you know, pencil Joel in for, for his numbers, and I'm, I'm expecting a lot out of Quincy, and I'm expecting a lot out of Reggie. The other guys, you know, I, I'm expecting them to come and play hard each and every night, but uh, I'm hoping that a few of those guys play over and above, um, you know, their years. Coach, on that note, uh, Zach Stahl and David Walker both got 16 minutes tonight. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the trust you have in these two freshmen and how that adds to the depth of this team? Yeah, both, both Davey and Zach are going to be really, really good players. We're probably asking them to do uh, more than, than would be normally re required of them if we had uh, John healthy and so on. But uh, 
you know, they've stepped up, they've played very well, they're answering the bell, and they're getting a great education and foundation for their future. Both those guys are really, really talented players, they're competitors, um, and they're going to be good, good players for us for years to come. You talked about uh, putting a lot of pressure on Quincy. What's sort of what you were talking to him in the huddle, him shooting three of ten, having five turnovers and only seven points? Were there any messages you were trying to convey to him? Back on track. Well, I think, uh, you know, one thing Quincy's, uh, an adjustment he's going to have to make mentally is, you know, once you go out and you make, you have a statement game like he, he did down in Princeton, um, you're not going to come in that next game and, and, and just be able to run and jump and catch and shoot and, and play wide open basketball. There's, there's going to be extra attention um, given to you and you're going to be played a little bit more physically, you're going to get bumped around a little bit, um, and you're going to be challenged. So uh, the, the, the next elevation for him is to, is to play through that physical contact and pick and choose the spots. I thought he had a spurt where you know, he really attacked the rim. He made, he made, made a couple threes. He made some really good defensive players. Um, he stepped it up in the second half, but I don't think initially he was ready for that uh, type of physicality that, that Vermont brought to him. Talking about that physicality, the front court at times to, tonight, a little bit overpowering. Do you see yourself going with a guy like Dinko to make provide some of some of that size that this team needs, but who also seemed a little bit uncomfortable in the court this far? Yeah, we get, we got to find a way to get him into the rotation. Uh, he, he, he's a big body. It's just uh, it, it, you know it, it, we're looking for that spot. But I would I would agree with you. I think we need to 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 take a look at him and try to get him a little bit more time uh, to have, allow him to contribute to this team. Um, they're a physical team now. They 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 went down. They played uh, Siena and and UConn, and they had 30 offensive rebounds in two games. So this is uh, I want to give a lot of credit to Vermont. This is kind of what they do. Um, you, you know, I I, I thought um, you, you know we had a chance to kind of level that out if we made some threes, uh, and unfortunately we didn't make enough of them tonight. One last question. Is there anything you're looking forward to going into Alaska that you're going to be working on trying to get these guys some non-conference games? What, is, what exactly are your goals for the conference? Yeah, well, I mean, you're going to see different styles of play, and people are going to challenge you in different ways. Each game unfolds a little differently. Princeton was different than Vermont, and BU was different than, than, than the other two. So each one is a learning opportunity for this team. And when you look at this roster with really only one senior playing out there, uh, these extra games, when we go to Alaska, they're exempt games, so we get kind of a three for one. Um, and you get in the tournament setting, so you're preparing yourself for uh, what you're going to face at the end of the year in Richmond in the conference tournament, where you have short preparation and you play night after night after night. So that's always great to play an in-season tournament. Uh, you know, there's a cultural advantage to getting up and seeing, uh, you know, what the world looks like uh, on that part of the earth. So we're looking forward to that. But really, for our guys, it's a, it, it's a chance to uh, compete against other quality programs in, in a quality environment that's going to be really well attended and to learn more about ourselves. We're only three games into the season. It's a long, long year. And we got a, we, we got a lot of growth in this team. Um, you know, where we're at today, you know, come back and take a look at us in February, we're going to be a much different basketball team. Uh, and the way you do that is you go out and you challenge yourself against good competition. Uh, th and I think this road trip being together will help our chemistry, will help our team development, and it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity for us.